Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video we're going to learn about PHP CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And this is what our final application is going to look like. So we're going to have a name and location of the users and display them on the same page as our HTML form is going to allow us to add new users to the database and then immediately display them on the page. We're also going to be able to edit or update our users just like that and finally delete any user we like as well so that makes up the whole create read update and delete functionality crud and just something to keep in mind to make things a little bit more easier to understand the functionality of create read update and delete correspond to mysql statements of insert select update and delete and that's what we're going to be using. Okay, so this is the outline that I've created of all the steps that we're going to be completing to create our application. And we're just going to be checking off these steps as we go along here and create the functionality. So the first step here is to create the post form with name, location, input fields, and the save button. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to projects new project name this project php crud and then navigate to the folder where i'm going to be storing the source files under localhost and i'm going to make sure the project url is correct by adding this php folder here and click finish i'm going to create a new file called index.php and then I'm just going to create the basic bootstrap HTML template as well as the form. Let's leave action blank for now. Method is going to be post and the first input type is going to be text with a name name and value enter your name. The second one is going to be text as well with a name location and for the value let's enter enter your location. Let's also go ahead and add the button. The type is going to be submit. I'm going to name this button save. And let's enter save for the actual button text. Let's also go ahead and add labels to our input fields. So label name for the name input field and label location for the location field and we are now done with the first step so we can go ahead and check that off the next step is to add divs and bootstrap classes to the form to make it look good and center the form and let's also go ahead and create process.php add it to form action and include it from the index.php file and for the bootstrap, I've created this table with all the bootstrap classes that we're going to be using and all the HTML elements that these classes apply to. Okay, let's go ahead and add bootstrap classes. So we're going to add a div tag to our label and input fields with a class form group. And it's going to apply to every label and input field that we have. So we're going to do the same thing here. Close the div tag. And this form group class also applies to the button. So let's also do the same thing for the button. And the next bootstrap class that we're going to use is called form control, which applies to both input fields. Let's go ahead and add form control and form control for both input fields. We're also going to add another div tag, which is going to wrap our form. Close it down here at the bottom of the form. And we're going to apply a class called row as well as 
a class called justify content center, which is going to center our form. So justify content center. Now let's see what our form looks like in a browser. And our form looks okay. We just forgot to add the styling to the button. So it's going to be btn, btn dash primary. So let's go ahead and add that to the button. Class equals btn, btn dash primary. Refresh the page. And now it looks a lot better. All right, so we are done styling our form. Now let's go ahead and create a new file called process.php, which is gonna be doing all the form processing. And then we're gonna include it from our index.php file using the require one statement, process.php, just like that. And we're also gonna add it to form action, process.php. Okay, we're now done with those steps, so we can go ahead and check them off and move on to the next one, which is to create MySQL database CRUD and table data with ID, name, and location fields. So I'm going to go ahead and go to localhost forward slash PHP my admin, go to databases and create a database called CRUD, and then create a table named data which is going to have three fields. The first one is going to be the primary ID. And let's set it to primary and auto increment. The second one is going to be name. And the third one is going to be location. And both of these are going to be bar char. Let's use 100 for values for both of them and that's it let's go ahead and hit save and our database is ready so let's go ahead and check this off and the next step is to connect to the database and insert the name and location records into the data table if the save button has been pressed and we're gonna be doing this inside of our process.php file. So first let's go ahead and connect to MySQL database. I'm going to be using object oriented style. Provide the host name, which is local host in this case. Username, password, and the database name, which is crud. Let's also create a MySQL I error if the connection fails. All right, I'm just going to test it to see if it works in the browser and there are no errors, so it's connecting to MySQL database successfully. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is check if the save button has been pressed and remember that we have named our button save and the form is using method post. So we're going to be accessing PHP's global variable called post and we're going to check if the save button has been pressed with an if statement. So we're going to say if is set post save. And that's how we check if the save button has been pressed. Next, let's go ahead and store name and location inside of variables because it's just going to make it a little bit more easier to work with these variables. Just like that. And next up, we're going to use the MySQL I insert into statement to insert these records into the database. So we're going to say MySQL I query insert into our table, which is data. The column name is name, and the second one is location, and values are name and location. I'll make sure to not forget the single quotes for both of those values. Or we're going to say die MySQLI 
error in case there's a syntax error. And once again, you guys can always look at this cheat sheet to see what the syntax is for all the MySQL statements. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out now. Let's go back to our form and view it in the browser and try adding a user to the database. Hit save and you have an error in your SQL syntax. So let's see what's wrong. And I have forgotten the, I have forgotten to close the, the bracket here. Let's try this again. And let's go ahead and go back to the PHP my admin and see if the record has been added. Hit browse and it has been added. So that part of the application is working. Let's go ahead and check this off and move on to the next step, which is to connect to the database and select the existing records and create the loop to display them above the form in an HTML table and then add the bootstrap for classes to style and center the table. Okay, so that's a lot of things. So let's go ahead and first connect to the database and select existing records. So this is going to be done on our main page because we're going to be displaying all the records on our index page above the form. So let's go ahead and open up PHP tags just above the form up here. And first, what we're going to do is connect to the MySQL database, just like we did in the process.php file. So it's going to be the same exact thing. Localhost, user, password, database name, or die, MySQLi error, MySQLi link. And we're going to run a query and store it inside of a MySQL result variable. MySQL query. And the query is just going to be select star from data, which is going to select all the records from the data. Now, I want to print out the result so that you guys can see what it looks like so far. So for that, I'm going to use my favorite function called pre-r to print the array in a more readable format. So I'm just going to paste it over here. And then use pre r result. And so this is what the result looks like so far. As you can see, it's got a field count three and num rows one. So that means it has pulled one record with three columns. But since it's an object and there's no data in it, like there's no name and location, we got to use a specific method to pull this data from the object. And for that, we're going to use a method called fetch a sock. So result fetch a sock and then we're going to print that out as well. And let's go ahead and comment out this part, view it in a browser. And now you can see that we do have a data. We have the ID name and location, which is exactly what we need. And the way this fetch a sock works is if we print it out again, it's going to fetch the next record and it's going to keep going and going and going until it gets all the records. So from that, we can create a while loop, which is going to keep fetching the records from the database and keep pulling them until it gets to the end of the database and prints out all the records to the screen. So just to show you guys what I mean, let's go ahead and add another user here. And then 
when I go back to this page, you can see that it has printed two records and they're both different, even though we have used the same exact function. So that's how fetch a sock works and that's why it's great to use it in a while loop to print out all the records from the database. And before creating the while loop, let's actually go ahead and create the HTML table first. So I'm gonna go ahead and close PHP tags so we can add HTML. And the whole thing is gonna be inside of the div and it's gonna have the same exact class to center the entire thing inside of a justify content center class. Let's go ahead and close the div tag over here for now. And then create the table. And the table is just gonna have a simple bootstrap class called table. Close the table. And then let's create the table head, which is the header of the table. Table row. And inside the tab table row, we're gonna have three THs. First one's gonna be name for our name value. Second one's gonna be location. And the third one, we're gonna use call span equals two, which is gonna hold our edit and delete buttons. So we're gonna name it action. Okay, so below the table header is where we're gonna be creating our while loop. So let's go ahead and reopen PHP tags here. And we're gonna say while result fetch a sock. So what we're doing here is we're uh, looping through the the result fetch a sock. So it's pulling records from the database just like we uh, seen before and we're storing everything inside of the row variable which is going to be array with our name and location of the user. So let's go ahead and use the short syntax for this and close the PHP tag here and we're going to use the table row first and inside of this table row we're going to have our table cells where we're going to be printing the actual values. So reopen the PHP tags and print out row name, which is going to be the name of the user. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste, and change this to location, which is going to be the location of the user. I'm also going to create another table cell down here, which is going to hold our edit and delete buttons that we're going to create later on. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do here is open up the PHP tags and end the while loop. Save everything and let's see what it looks like so far in the browser. And looks like everything worked. It's printing out name and location. And let's see what happens if we add another user. Refresh the page and everything is working. It's printing out all the records, but there's no padding on a page. So it kind of looks weird. So let's go ahead and add a div with a class container and this is a bootstrap for class which adds page paddings and margins so it's gonna look so it's gonna make our page look good and now everything looks good so we're now done with this step and now let's go ahead and add edit and delete link buttons and pass the ID of the record as get variable in the URL for both links and we're gonna do that inside of the table cell that we've left empty so for the edit link, we're gonna say href equals index.php because that's where our form is located and that's where we're gonna be editing our record on. And we're gonna pass the variable as edit and print out the actual row ID inside of the edit variable. Let's also add a bootstrap class right away. Uh, called btn info and 
and for our delete link we're gonna be linking to the process.php and pass the variable as delete and do the same thing here by printing out the row record. And for this one, let's go ahead and use a BTN danger class because it's dangerous to delete a record. All right, I think this is it. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. And it's looking good. And you can see down there at the bottom of the screen that the variables are being passed correctly. So we're done with that part. And now if the delete button has been clicked, we want to delete the record from the data using past ID from the get delete variable value. Okay, we're going to do that inside of our process.php. And it's going to be basically the same logic as the save button. So we just want to check if the if the delete button has been clicked. So if is set, and this time we're accessing the get variable because that's the variable that we're passing through the URL instead of post. So we want to check if is set get delete, and that's how we know that the delete button has been clicked. So now let's just go ahead and store the ID inside of the variable. And then we just want to run the MySQLI query to delete the record from the database. So when I say delete from data where ID equals ID, as simple as that, or die MySQLI error. And that should do it. Let's see if that works. Let's try deleting a record. Go back to the page, refresh, and it's working. Okay, so the next thing we want to do here is create a session message and message types for save and delete buttons and then redirect the user back to index.php for both. Okay, so for that we're going to incorporate sessions. Let's go back to the process.php and here at the top we want to start the session by by a session start function and then inside of the save button we want to set the session message variable to record has been saved and we also want to set the message type so we call it msg type to success and for the delete we want to do pretty much the same thing with a different message type and message so record has been deleted and for the message type let's use danger and I'll explain what we're gonna do with the message types in a little bit let me just fix this part here. I'm just going to cut and paste it here just to keep our code organized. And we also want to redirect the user back to the index.php page. So for that, we're going to use a header function with location colon index.php. And that redirects the user back to the index page. Same thing for the delete button. Okay, so now that our session variables have been set, all we have to do is print them out on the index page. And we want to do this part at the very top of the page. So I'm going to open PHP tags up at the top. And first of all, we want to check if the session message has been set. So we're going to say if is set session message. Then we're going to use a, a div with a class, with a bootstrap class alert, and then alert dash. And here's where we're going to be printing out that 
message type. So it's a really handy way of um, using Bootstrap classes along with PHP to have this kind of dynamic functionality. So what it does here is if the message is, for example, success, it's going to use the bootstrap class called alert-success. And if the message is danger, it's going to use the bootstrap class alert-danger. And both of those are bootstrap classes. If we go here, you can see that they're indeed bootstrap classes for danger and success. And that's what's going to change the color of the message based on their type. Okay, so message type, and then we want to print out the actual message. So we're going to open up PHP tags again, and echo session message. And then we also want to unset session message. Let's close the div tag and the and if statement as well. That's it. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, let's try deleting the record first. And boom, everything has worked. We've deleted the record and we're displaying the session message. Record has been deleted with the appropriate bootstrap class. Now let's try adding another user to the database. Save, and record has been saved. The bootstrap class is working as well. So we're done with that part. And we've already completed this step as well. So we can check that off. And the next thing we're gonna do is, if the edit button has been clicked, select the existing record from the database and set name variable and location variables and display them in the form input fields. So just to show you guys, this is the completed application. And when the edit button is clicked, we want to change the values of our form input fields to the values of that record ID, which is nine in this case. And you can see how it's changing. And we're also going to change the save button to update when the edit link has been clicked. So you can see how it's changing here. All right, let's go back to process.php and first of all, check if the edit button has been clicked. So if is set, and remember that we're still accessing the get variable. So get edit. And then let's go ahead and set the variable ID to get ID. And then run the MySQL I query. and say select from data, which is our table where ID equals ID or die MySQLi error. Now, when we're selecting a record like this from our database, it's good practice to make sure that the record exists before doing anything else. So we're gonna say if count result equals equals one. So that means the record has been found inside of the database. And now we can set our variables. So we're going to store the result inside of the row. And we're going to use the the method fetch array, just like we did before. And that will return the data from the record. So now we can set the name to row name. And we can set the location to row location. And now we have our variables ready. So now let's go ahead and print those variables inside of the values of our input fields. So this is our form and I'll actually screwed up this part. So instead of value here, guys, it should be placeholder, of course. So let's change that to placeholder. And for the value, we're going to be printing out the actual variables here. So echo name for the name and value equals 
back uh, location for location. And so now it's printing out some kind of an error and that's because the variables haven't been set because the edit button hasn't been clicked yet. So we wanna make sure to set the default values of name and location to empty strings in case the edit button hasn't been clicked yet. So I wanna do this at the top here. Let's say name equals empty string and location equals empty string as well. And let's see what happens now. And now we're not getting that error anymore. So let's try clicking the edit button. Undefined index ID on line 35. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, we actually wanna say edit here, of course, because that's the actual name of the variable. Okay, let's try this again edit and now w those values are being set inside of our form input fields as should be now the only thing that we gotta do is change the button to update when the edit button has been clicked and for that let's go ahead and create a new variable called update and set its value to true and the default value of update is going to be false then go back to our index page and here at the bottom of the form where our button is, we're going to open up PHP tags and we're gonna say if update equals true, so that means that edit button has been pressed, then we wanna change the value of our bootstrap class to btn info, so that's just gonna create another button type and we want to change the text to update and the name to update as well. So that's going to change our button to update. And we want to say else we want to print out the regular save button. And we want to make sure to close the if statement down here and if and that should do it, let's test it out. I'm gonna click the edit button and the values are being changed to the actual record ID and the button has been changed to update as well. So that's working. And now all we have to do is create the actual functionality to update the record. So we have already created the update variable. So the last three steps that we're gonna be completing is for the update button functionality and the first step is to add a hidden input field with the value of the record ID to access it from post. So let me explain it. Okay, so since we're gonna be accessing the update button from within the form, and the form is using the post method, we need some kind of a way of accessing the record ID from the post variable. And for that we can create a input type hidden with the value of ID inside of it. So the actual input field is gonna be hidden from the user, but we can still access the value of the record ID so that we can then work with the record and update it. Okay, so just beneath our form tag, we're gonna create that input hidden field, input type equals hidden. We're gonna name it ID. And the value is going to be the actual ID variable that we're going to create. So echo ID. And at this time the ID variable doesn't exist so we wanna make sure to set its default value. So we're just gonna set it to zero. Okay, so we are done with the hidden part and now if the update button has been clicked, we wanna update the record with a new name and location using the value from the hidden ID input field and we wanna set the value of ID to zero outside of the if statement, we have already done that. And finally, we're gonna create the message with the session variables as well as the type and redirect the user back to the index page. Okay, so let's go ahead and check if the update button has been clicked first. So if is set, post update. And we can now access that ID, so post ID, so that's our hidden input field, and then name and 
location are going to be accessed from post name and location. So these name and location are the new variables that we want to update our record with. So I'm going to say MySQL I query. And this time we're going to run the update query. Update data set name equals the new name. Then comma location equals location. And we want to say where ID equals ID of the record. Or die MySQLI error. And that should do it. Now let's go ahead and create the session messages. So same thing, session message. We're going to say a record has been updated. And MSG type. So that's the different type of message for the bootstrap class. I want to use warning. And then redirect the user back to the index page. And that should do it. Let's go ahead and test everything out. Gonna click the edit button. Change this to another value. Hit update. And the record has been updated successfully. So all the functionality is working. Let's test it out once again. Delete the record. Add another record. Add another one. Edit. Update. Delete. And everything is working. And let's go ahead and check out these two last steps. And that's it for this video for PHP CRUD. Create, update, and delete. If you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And you can download all the content of this video from my Patreon page. And I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.